Hello, I'm Pastor Gary Jennings, uh, hosting the Addiction Free Ministries today, television program. I'd like to welcome you to the program. We have a couple of great ladies here today that Miss Candy Rose will be interviewing and talking to. Uh, both of these ladies have a wonderful, powerful testimony of where God brought them from, where He's brought them to, and of course, Miss Judy, uh, where He's touched her children and delivered children and she, she can tell you from a mama's angle uh, the power of God and also the strongholds of addiction. So we just welcome you today to this program. Stay tuned in and uh, let God touch your heart today through the, these testimonies. Well, friends, I like Pastor Gary said, I'm so excited to be with two of my friends here. This is Missy Reed and this is Judy Hibbs. And Missy Reed has a testimony very similar to mine. As some of you may know, I was a former stripper and a prostitute. And that's Missy's story. But Missy has been through a lot. And she's going to be able to give you her story here. And the reason we also wanted Judy Hibbs on here is because the Lord used her in Missy's life to help bring her to, who, to know who Jesus is. So don't go away. Text somebody, call them, and tell them we're on the air. As a child, I was uh, very abused. Um, I had a, what you call, evil stepmother um, who abused me and beat me all the time because I looked like my mother. And uh, she, uh, I, want, I do want to say she's saved now and set free and, oh, yeah. and has asked me to forgive her and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She calls me every day. She's oh, wonderful. Yeah. Um, she, uh, Anyway, I was abused as a kid, um, had ran away from home, Was uh, um, uh, they had missing person pictures everywhere looking for me. When I finally did turn myself in um, to the police so I could come back on the Trailways bus station um, and come home, then I got married to a man at 16 years old to get away from that abuse. I got married very young, and so and I married a man who was actually, he had paranoid schizophrenic, and he actually beat me and tried to kill me and my children. Um, so I... Um, I needed to get away from him um, and tried many times and kept going back to him because I had, ch you know, two beautiful children by him and I and, uh, just couldn't get away from the abuse. And uh, one day, well, my my father, who did drugs and stuff, he had a friend um, that he was doing drugs with who got him on the needle and um, had actually seen me and my dad had told him how I was abused and everything. And my ex-husband had come and kicked in my door and was going to... Uh, trying to kill me, you know, he was trying to hurt me, and uh, this man, Jack, had showed up and had uh, beat him up and ran him off and, you know, helped me, and uh, so I hooked up with the man that, that rescued me, you know, and and he uh, got me on the needle. Um, my uh, Before he got me on the needle, I had an 11-month-old baby who had passed away and died. Uh, well, she was at I was doing drugs, and um, I had sent her home with a friend of mine who was pregnant and about to have a baby, and she wanted to, uh, she wanted to learn how to keep a child, you know, because she was going to have a baby, and so she had kept my my oldest daughter, the one that's alive. She kept her the weekend before, and so um, she was going to take them both, but at the same time, but she didn't, and so the very next weekend, um, she took she took my my youngest child with her, and all I know is that. I was told later while she was drunk that she uh, left her in the car and she froze to death. But uh, there was a there was a bigger picture behind it. There was some drugs involved, and her husband was a drug dealer and some stuff. Um, she uh, she was my best friend. I trusted her, so I don't think she did anything, you know, not on purpose or anything. It was you know something happened in that situation. So anyway, um, of course I at the time when my daughter did die. I wasn't on the needle yet, but I decided I was going to start me trying to medicate my feelings. And so I started shooting up with this man, and um, it became the drug, drugs and sex, you know. And, uh, of course, he got uh, we got arrested a few times for two class Y felonies, which was the same as murder. And uh, they kicked in our door many times, and he um, uh, went to prison and stuff. And so when he, of course, while he was gone... I had to get my drugs, and so I became a stripper and uh, with men and different stuff. And uh, of course, when you're on alcohol and doing drugs, I'm just prostituting myself out. So you just did whatever you could do to to get your drugs. So, and of course, I I liked it. 
I liked being a stripper. I liked showing my body. I, li I liked it at the time, you know. And so I just enjoyed starting to get drunk before I went to work, and I would just be ready, you know, to just get up there and make the money. Um, and then, of course, I'd plunge deeper and deeper into sin. And, um, right, and um, started sleeping with just about probably, I was very well known in Hot Springs, um, sleeping with about every drug cook in town to get drugs. And um, they knew I was the wild one. They could come to my house. And, uh, and, you know, the party would be on. So anyway, uh, I just kept slipping deeper and deeper into sin and um, worked at an escort service, um, just uh, giving myself to all these men, I think really for attention. It wasn't money and attention, you know, when you don't, you just want attention. I like the attention. And so, uh, and then uh, before you know it, uh, I am going through a murder trial. Um I had to go to a, through a murder trial because a boyfriend of mine had actually uh, killed a man that um, we had, me and so, uh, several others had sold a bunch of drugs. We had sold a bunch of drugs for. Um, and so I had to uh, go through a murder trial. And it's really crazy because of all the sin and stuff, I ended up, uh, when, when I first got saved, I mean, I ended up with my teeth knocked out, no hair. My hair was, I was bald. Um, full of uh, scars. I'm, I've got lots of scars on my body. Um, you know, all the way down my legs, my hands. I shot up, uh, and just any kind of vein I could find, I shot up, and you know, so just literally hit bottom. I was just lost everything. I lost uh, not only did one of my daughters die, but I lost another one um, uh, to drugs. She was taken from me uh, through DHS. They come and took her from the school and took her from me. And I've been in and out of treatment centers and tried to get her back, but I just couldn't get away from the drugs. I tried, you know. Um, and uh, um, I met Miss Judy. That's where I, miss, I met Miss Judy. Um, I did drugs with her son. And I've been delivered and set free, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in love with Jesus. There's that scripture in the Bible, uh, Luke 7, 47, um, that uh, talks about... Uh, she has been forgiven of much, so she loves much. Yeah. I'm in love with Jesus, and uh, I've been clean for uh, it, not only just clean, but delivered, set free from cigarettes, alcohol, prostitution, lust. He delivered me from everything 14 years ago, um, and I'm telling you, he has blessed me beyond measure. Um, uh, he's gave me peace about my daughter that passed away. Um, I know she's in heaven, and so, um, you know, I had a godly... Pray, yes, I had a, a, a godly a grandmother who prayed for me all the time. And, you know, she, she taught me about Jesus. I went to a church as a child and stuff. And so I knew and believed in Jesus. And um, I finally, I guess, I got through the murder trial and everything I went through. I guess what finally got me saved is um, I just got tired of, I just got sick and tired. Like Missy said, we, I met her through my son, Brandon. She was doing drugs with him, and he would be gone for days at a time. Well, one time when he was, he would come home and say there was some two girls in a house that didn't have any food. They had no electricity, they, and they were starving. It had been days, and so I would cook for them and let him take them. Well, one time, uh, my husband followed him. And we found out where she lived. Brandon would never tell me. But I found out where she lived. So a few weeks later, it just kept getting worse. Brandon was in very bad health. And every time he left, I thought, well, this I may never see him again. Yeah. And uh, so one time I got up enough nerve, I thought, well, this has got to stop. So I went to her house, and I kicked the door in, <laughs> or tried. <laughs> And I told them, I said, I want my son. I want you to make him come out here right now. And they said, well, he's not here. And we promise you he's not here. And I said, well, where is Missy? And they said, well, she's at work, and he might be with her. And uh, I said, well, where does she work? And the girl told me. So she said, shapes. And uh, so I went downtown, and it was a private club. And... The lady at the door wouldn't let me in. 
because I wasn't a member. And I said, well, I want to see Missy. I want to see Spanky, as they called her. That was her stage name. And the lady said, well, she's on stage and you can't see her. Well, there was a chair, a folding chair right there by the door, so I just sat down in it. And I, I said, I'm not leaving until I talk to her. And so the lady went and told her, I guess. So in a few minutes, she did come down. And when she came around the partition, I was ready just to give it to her. I was ready just to, to be truthful, claw her eyes out if I had to. I mean, I was fighting for my son's yeah. life. And uh, I took one look at her, and she looked so pitiful. And I know it was God. He said, she's one of, she's somebody's child, too. And that right there, I thought, her mother probably is somewhere going through the same thing I am. And I could tell she wasn't, she, I don't know. I looked at her, and I thought, this girl's got good in her. I know she does. I could see it in her eyes. And I ended up hugging her instead of hitting her. <laughs> and I told her who I was, and she told me, she said, I don't blame you one bit. I don't blame you at all. That's your son, and I understand. And we sat there for three or four minutes just holding on to each other. And I, t I think I invited her to church. I think I told her where I went to church and that I'd be glad to come get her. And uh, a few weeks later, I saw her at Walmart. Oh, yeah, I remember you saying this. Oh, yeah, that's right. And uh, I saw her down an aisle, and I started toward her, and she tried to run from me. <laughs> and she did. She ran and got a few aisles away, but I caught up with her. Yes. And I gave her a card with my name on it and phone number and my address and a church card. Yes. And I had put my information on the back of it. And I told her if she ever changed her mind that just to call me. Yes. Well, I'm not sure how much longer it was wasn't that long um she showed up on my doorstep at my house and my little grandson this is how scary she looked he ran in the kitchen where I was cooking and he said grandma there's a lady on the porch and boy nana she looks mean <laughs> <laughs> and I opened the door and there was missy she looked pretty bad. She yeah, was thin. She was bald She's bald, yeah, she and, and she was very thin. And yeah. just, she was a young woman, and she looked 20 years older than she was. Mm -hmm. And she asked me, would you come and get me and take me to church tomorrow? Oh. This was Saturday. And I told her I would, and I don't think she believed me. Because she had asked her cousin to take her, and her cousin never came after her. But we did. We went after her. And Missy, the minute she walked in, she went to the altar and fell on her face. And she stayed there the whole service. The whole service. Another thing I remember you telling me is that she was about ready to steal something in Walmart when she yeah. called her. Yes, yeah, probably <laughs> saved her from going to jail. Right. Uh, Izzy, you want to pick up from there now what happened when you got into church? Yes, um, Miss Judy, of course, she was, uh, after she picked me up for church and everything and took me to church and I had gave my heart to God, she was my first uh, Christian friend. friend, And um, she became a mom to me. Um, so always had her door open to me. You know, I was always at her house. She sowed so much more into my life than she can ever, I, I think more than she even knows. And I'm not quite sure what God did in me, but I know I've been healed of hepatitis C. I have been delivered and set free. And I, ever since that night, I mean, yes, I have, I don't know what all he did, but I have been changed. And Miss Judy continued to, to sow into my life and just to, just to be there for me. And I practically lived at her house. 
I mean, I didn't have any, any, you know, godly friends but her. Um, and, of course, I had, uh, I had joined the church and um, have an awesome, awesome. Lakeview Assembly God is the most awesome church ever. God told me at the altar one night that if I would go out and help other people's children, that he would save mine. And uh, he, has, he has done that. My son Brandon is saved in church. He's free of drugs. And he is just a big influence over our family. My youngest son is in church. Uh, my daughter's in church. Um, my oldest boy is the only one that isn't in church. But I really believe he is saved. He knows God. He loves God. He's backslidden a little bit, but I'm sure God's going to bring him in. Oh, yeah. And because God promised me that day at the altar that if I would just bring him other people's children, I didn't have to worry about mine. I do want to say that um, something very important is not only did God save and deliver me and set me free from all the addictions, but he has brought me a godly husband. My husband is amazing, and we've been married for 11 years. So for God to be able to take someone that was in such deep prostitution and all that and make me faithful yes. to one man, yes. and uh, me and my husband will be married 12 years on July 17th, which is a very important day for us. Um, I, do wanna, I, I wanted to end by saying um, the best advice that I could give someone if they really, you know, they're really hurting and they're really in addiction like I was is to um, not, first of all, uh, ask God to forgive you of your sins, and, and, and Brother Gary will tell him how to do that, but, uh, but to, and to get saved. But to find them a home church and get plugged into it, I mean, go to the pastor, and they will, they will give you something to do, whether it's drive the church van or, or something. Get plugged into the church and pray and read your Bible every day and go to church. And it's very important to have a church family. And I just, I mean, I'm... I'm telling you, there's nothing like my church family, and I, it's just amazing, you know, how God has transformed my life. And and I didn't tell you all this, but I also had lived in a condemned house. You know, Miss Judy had said something about that. I lived in a condemned house, and God has blessed me so much that, you know, we own, uh, I own, I, I just got me a new car that's brand new and paid for and everything. I own my home. I have two rental properties that are paid for. You know, God has just continued to bless me and bless me. I teach the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade uh, kids at church. I'm in the choir. Um, I'm just, you know, uh, you just, yes, we both work at Teen Challenge, and, and it's, it's a blessing, you know. And I just have to say, you know, Miss Judy, if she would not have, uh, if she would have just lashed out at me and would not have went after me like she did, I would not be where I'm at today. She showed love to me, and, and, I, and I don't, I, I know she's reached many, many lives. But I can actually say I am that one, you know, and 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 she. If it was not for her, then I would probably and God, uh, her letting God use her, I would probably be dead and in hell right now. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. Thank you for tuning in and watching uh, Addiction Free Television today. I just want you to know that if you're out there and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, this is the greatest and most perfect time for you to receive him as your Lord and Savior. He can change your life, change your situations. Uh, it's amazing how God turns things around and how he begins to heal relationships and families, and uh, he can even heal your job. You'll be a better employee. So every everything in your life will turn around when you turn your life to him. So we want to just sort of lead you in a prayer today and, and just let you know that how much God loves you and uh, how much he wants to save you. If you're not a Christian, you don't know Christ as your personal Savior. It's not a big process. What we're going to do today, we're just going to pray together. So I just want you to pray this simple prayer with me today uh, and let Jesus take a hold of your life and come into your life. Let's pray together. Father, I confess I'm a sinner. Lord, I know I'm lost in need of a Savior. And I just ask you today to be come Lord of my life take my sins away you said in one place in the scripture though 
they're like scarlet. You'll make them to become as white as wool. Another place you said you'd cast them as far as the east is from the west. And so, Lord, today I confess I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to change my life. With the Holy Spirit's help, I'm going to be a servant. I'm going to obey your word. I'm going to live by your word. And uh, I'm going to allow you to change my life, not only for this world, but also for eternity, for the world to come. And I thank you today for hearing me. I thank you today for saving me. I thank you for changing me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ha, 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 I am Matt. I destroy homes, tear families apart, take your children, and that's just the start. I'm more costly than diamonds, more costly than gold. The sorrow I bring is a sight to behold. If you ever need me, I'm easily found. I live all around you, in schools and in town. I live with the rich, I live with the poor, I live down the street, and ha <laughs> ha, maybe next door. My power's awesome, try me and you'll see, and if you do, you may never break free. Just try me once, and I will let you go, but try me twice, and I'll own your soul. When I possess you, you'll steal and you'll lie. You'll do what you have to, just to get high. The crimes you'll commit for my narcotic charms will be worth the pleasure you'll feel in my arms. You'll lie to your mother, you'll steal from your dad. When you see the tears, you should feel sad. But you'll forget your morals and how you were raised. I'll be your conscience. I'll teach you my ways. I take kids from parents and parents from kids. I turn people from God and separate friends and make you say things that hurt them time and time again. I'll take everything from you, your looks and your pride. I'll be with you always, right by your side. You'll give up everything, your family, your home, your friends, and your money. Then you'll be all alone. I'll take and take until you have nothing to give. And when I'm finished with you, you'll be lucky to live. <laughs> if you try me, be warned, this is no game. If given the chance, I'll drive you insane. I'll ravish your body. I'll control your mind. I'll owe you completely. Your soul will be mine. <laughs> the night I'll give you when lying in bed, the voices you'll hear from inside your head. The sweats, the shakes, the visions you'll see, I want you to know, these are all gifts from me. But then it's too late and you'll know in your heart that you are mine and we shall not part. You'll regret that you tried me, they always do. But you came to me, not I to you. You knew this would happen, many times you were told, but you challenged my power and chose to be bold. You could have said no and just walked away. If you could live that day over, now what would you say? I'll be your master, you will be my slave. I'll even go with you when you come to your grave. <gasps> now that you have met me, what will you do? Will you try me or not? It's all up to you. I can bring you more misery than words can tell. Come, take my hand, let me lead you to ha <laughs> ha. Addiction Free Ministry presents powerful resources written by its CEO, Candy Rose. Her autobiography, Spirits of Seduction, proves Christ can transform any lifestyle from X-rated to G-rated. Candy Rose believes testimonies build faith, encouraging others they too can have that new life in Christ. Go to Amazon.com or their website, AddictionFreeMinistry.com, to receive these life-changing resources for yourself or a loved one. There is help. There is hope. Hi, this is Candy Rose, CEO of Addiction Free Ministry. Every day, countless lives are being destroyed by addiction. Precious people end up in jail, a hospital, divorce, and the grave. Not only do individuals suffer from the effects of addiction, but so do the children and parents. It's a ripple effect. Do you or a loved one want help 
go to our website to find referrals and resources. You will find help and hope. Hi, my name is Barbara Ferguson, and I have been blessed with being asked to be on Candy's board for her ministry, uh, Addiction Free Ministry. And throughout that time, I've had the opportunity to see what an amazing, awesome ministry it is. And I asked her for the opportunity to talk to you about becoming a partner of the ministry because I've noticed that Candy is not one to ask for partners or to talk about the need. Every person knows someone probably very close to them that has an addiction, addiction of some kind. There's so many different forms of addiction. And we need partners. We need people that will agree to partner with us and and give so much a month. It can be as little as $10 a month, up to as much as you want, or it can be a one-time gift. Anything you can do would really help the ministry. Just to ask you, please, if you would prayerfully consider that, because I know the Lord would, will bless you like he's blessed me. I just encourage, if you're struggling with any kind of addiction or you know someone uh, in, a, in your family or someone, just maybe one layer of, of connection of a person removed from you, please proactively take the initiative to reach out to them and say, hey, I saw this program where, you know what, there's actually help. There's actually hope. We'll be happy to talk to you, happy to bring you in or talk to you about that loved one that needs to come in. Hi, my name is Robert Scott. I'm the program director of the Father's House Ministry. We are a Christian discipleship program for men and women located in Donaldson, Arkansas. What we are is a recovery ministry. We and if we use the commands outlined for the God outlined for you in the Bible on how to live your life, and use that to help people assist and and provide a drug, alcohol, and nicotine-free environment where people can learn and practice self-discipline. Like it doesn't cost anything to come to our ministry, and we would love for you to get some information from us. Thank you. Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. But Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine, now I'm saved from all.